Welcome to week four garden tour. I'm pretty impressed with myself that I've actually done this four weeks in a row. I keep thinking I'm gonna take a week off because not much has happened in the garden, but then everything happens and I need to do another garden tour. So hopefully I can keep it up throughout the summer when I get really busy with my work. But look at this. But look at this, my grape hyacinths are looking really nice. Little sailboat daffodils behind them and the bigger ice follies daffodils behind those. We're starting to get nights in the 50 degrees here. I'm not planting tender annuals quite yet because I know there still could be another cold snap before we normally plant out in mid-May. Here's my bleeding heart. I used to have two here, but one disappeared. And they do really well in the springtime. And then it completely dies back as soon as the heat of the summer comes. But then every year it comes back. Finally getting some foliage on the astilbes over here in the shade garden. And finally getting some growth on the hostas. So otherwise this area looks very bare. Might have to do another color blends bulb order and fill that area in. And then very exciting are the purple lady tulips that are starting to color up, which means that we are going to have flowers pretty soon. Now, these are year two tulips and they're not perennial type tulips so I'm waiting to see how well they do in their second year I did my I did everything I could to make them come back I cut the flower stalks off off last year once the flowers were spent I left the green foliage at the bottom until it completely died back which was really hard because it doesn't look that nice when it's dying back but I do have other stuff in this area that grows up and kind of hides it. And then I fertilized them with some seaweed feed. Whenever I was fertilizing my vegetables, I'd come over and dump some on them. And it looks like it worked. I have to see how many I ordered of these. I think maybe 40. And honestly, it looks like most of them are coming back. Not quite as many on this side, and I thought they were going to be a little bit smaller, but they're growing pretty tall, so we shall see. And these tulips are a really pretty shade of reddish purple, very similar to the coral bell, the very smoothie coral bells over here. And I think it looks really nice with our brick walkway and our red front door. My ladies' mantles covered in dew. The spirea has finally has some leaves on it. My Japanese forest grass it was basically just looking like a pile of brown sticks until I mean, this is honestly the first time I've noticed that it actually has new growth. So that's exciting. I want this area filled in with greenery. Those are alliums. 
This is a Lion King iris. This is really tall, beautiful purple iris that comes up a little bit later, like a July. And then I have other irises in here that are purple and white. And I probably need to divide those either this year or next year. You can see they start to form a circle and there's no growth in the middle. So is this one. So you can divide those and make more irises. There's more grape hyacinth. I just think they look so pretty in front of the daffodils. Yellow and purple are opposites on the color wheel. So that's kind of a tried and true color combo that's pleasing to the eyes. Here are my peonies and we actually have some growth here. So as you can see, we can still see the daffodils behind because the peonies take a little while to get going. But once those are dying back and not looking so pretty, we'll have all this beautiful peony foliage that gets probably two to three feet tall. So that's a nice covering. So my bobo hydrangea, my sedums, and I'm not expecting to see any growth on this very awesome, summerific, hardy hibiscus. Yet, it takes a long time to get going. I kind of leave some of the old growth there just so I remember where it is. And you don't <laughs> dig around it and plant other things. Up here against the fence, I've got my clematis, which... Honestly, I'm so bad with growing clematis. I don't know if anything's gonna happen with that. I mean, I'm sure it'll have flowers, but I just don't think it's gonna get, well, I hope it gets taller. I kind of wanted it to grow on that side of the arch. This side of the arch, the left side has a David Austin climbing rose. It was a bare root. I planted it last year. Oh, nice, we have a dog poop bag. And I have another David Austin bare root rose to plant, hopefully today if we have time. But it basically just comes and it's just it's a pile of sticks with some roots on it. You soak it in water and you plant it in the ground and I mean this is year two. It's already grown pretty high. Then I have um, some daylilies. I did plant some new alliums in this area. This is the rose garden. This corner is the rose garden. We have some shrub roses all around this um, water fountain. And the color scheme of this side of the garden is sort of pastels, blue and pink. Um, so I had gotten some more bulbs from White Flower Farm, and I'm pretty sure those are them. They're a cerulean blue colored mini allium. The only problem with alliums is you can't tell the difference between these. Well, I can. I think I can tell the difference, but I'm nervous. I'm pretty sure this is just onion grass. Usually it has the white stripe down the middle. And I want to pull that, and I'm pretty sure this is the allium, but I'm not 100% sure. So, I guess we'll wait and see. Try to weed this area a little bit better. I put some flocks in this area to have a little bit more later season color. So those are growing up. Look at this Nepeta. So I think it's so pretty even before the flowers come, but pretty soon, that's one of the earlier bloomers, we'll have the bluish, purplish flowers of the Nepeta. 
and that'll be in front of the pretty pink shrub roses which is a very classic common napita and shrub roses it looks really pretty together and then we've got my double tulips which these are these are coming back this is year two for those as well they were part of the big color blends order two years ago and they are coming back but i don't think those ones ha are come i don't think i've had as good of a return rate on those but even so they're really beautiful tulips they're double tulips they kind of look like peonies and everybody always asks me what they are so those are pretty fun the wild tulips on the other hand my species tulips are going crazy look at those they're very pretty in pink when they're closed and then when they open they look like white stars floating in the wind. Here's the pretty silver foliage of my lavender phenomenal and it looks like that all winter which is nice because everything else dies back. And I know I've already talked about a lot of these herbaceous perennials. So I won't talk about every single one again. But I always come back to this sun-kissed lime GM because I just think it's so pretty. And it looks like... I've actually never seen this bloom. GMs are, usually have orange flowers. And it looks like we have some buds. exciting pretty tulips and this was kind of accidental I put those pink tulips in the front even though this is kind of the purple and lime side of the garden but they bloom at a completely different time and it's they're pretty much exactly the same color as this azalea I don't know if that's a PJ PJM it was here when we moved in but it's kind of accidental that we have those two pink things blooming at the same time but I like it This is also the first time I ev will ever see this espresso cranes bill with flowers. It's supposed to be an early flowering, maybe light blue, although it kind of looks pink. I thought it was going to be light blue, but shows you how much I know. Another week's gone by. Things have grown inches. Can't wait to see these tulips. I do have one thing to show back here in the cut flower garden. Let's go check that out. I finally planted my sweet peas. Now for those who aren't familiar, sweet peas flowers, although they look very similar to the peas you eat, they are poisonous, they're not edible, and they're these beautiful kind of frilly flowers. They grow up tall, I mean they're, they'll pro hopefully if things go well they'll be taller than me. So you have to provide some sort of support for them. We put these in yesterday. Um, as a support system, we're using six foot tall T-posts, three of them along this eight foot run, and then Hordanova netting. 
and that is attached to the posts using zip ties. And sweet peas are pretty cold tolerant. Um, they can take a little bit of a freeze. We don't have any freezing temperatures in the 10 day forecast. However, there is one night that might be down into the 30 degrees Fahrenheit. But these will be okay. And I also planted out some of my colder season vegetables. Um, I do have frost fabric if it gets really cold. But to be honest, the only, there's only one night that looks like it might be in the 30s coming up. And then after that, it looks like we're going to have temps in the 50s at night. So a couple weeks away from planting annuals, but we're getting there. It's exciting. After a long, cold winter, the promise of new things in spring. We still have a lot of work to do. I haven't even put in the new drip system to water this garden. So I'll have to water those with the hose for now. Um, but maybe this weekend or this week sometime we'll put in that drip system. Over here still have the herb garden set up. I think it's the back stairway. I did go shopping this week. I went to get shrubs and I came home with mint and annuals. Classic, right? Oh look. We've got a bloom on the chives. But anyway, this was a new addition, apple mint. I just can't resist mint. It's so easy to grow. I love using it in drinks. Just made our first mojitos this weekend. I personally love pineapple mint. It's so pretty. You can use it in floral arrangements. It's got these like light green and white variegated leaves. And it tastes really good too. If you're not like a mint person where you don't like the strong taste of mint this is very um, mild a mild mint it's really good in mojitos so now I have apple mint chocolate mint I don't really like chocolate mint in drinks that's more of like a peppermint I think you could use it for like a tea or baking regular store-bought mint spearmint and then I have lemon balm. I like putting lemon balm in mojitos too. Um, it just kind of gives that lemony flavor. And then oregano and thyme. Then we have the green stock garden that has the lettuces planted in it. And it's, they're growing really well actually. So they do okay in the cooler weather, which is nice because the my salad greens in the greenhouse are kind of petering out. And some of these I planted pretty densely in here. So I'm not necessarily going for head lettuce. I just come out and pick some of the outer leaves whenever I need a salad. And then it'll keep growing. It's the cut and come again method. And the other green stalk have strawberries. My son is so excited to eat these every day. Are the strawberries ready, mommy? Are the strawberries ready? So that's super exciting. Can't forget to talk about the Kwanzaa cherry tree that is here next to the Potage and is just starting to bloom. And by next week, this thing is going to be gorgeous. There's the kitchen garden. Here's this beautiful tree. I don't know if you can see all the buds on it, but so 
Some of them are just starting to open. And basically, this is all you can see out of my son's room window. And when it's in full bloom, it basically looks like he's got a sea of pink puffballs out his window. It's so cool. I'll make sure to take a photo or a video of that. And then we have the Potager kitchen garden, vegetable garden, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did plant a few of my extra sweet peas in this bed. I still have to finish um, putting some twine on this trellis so that they can grow up. But I like to have a vertical element in each of the beds and I like to have at least one flower in each of the beds. Because not only does it look pretty, but it, they also attract pollinators, which is key for pollinating a lot of the vegetables that plant, I'll plant in here. Look at this asparagus. It's crazy. These are like waist high right now. Um, I did put rhubarb in this perennial bed because apparently my husband loves rhubarb and he was very upset that we did not have any rhubarb in our garden so put that in over here we have really good growth coming up from the onion sets and the onion sets let me see if I can remember what I planted I know there's Dutch moon shallots, I believe, are what they are called. Um, let's see. Oh. Yellow moon... Yellow moon Dutch shallot? Those are from the main potato. Uh, yeah, these are from the main potato lady. <clears throat> and then, I know I have a red and a yellow onion. They're good for storing. Red barren onion. and stuck garter. It's like a yellow onion. So I use a lot of onions in cooking. I also have some carrots planted over here. I use a lot of onions and shallots in cooking and a lot of garlic. This is the garlic that I planted last fall. So they're taking up a lot of space in the beds but it's something that I use a lot so I wanted to have a lot planted. And then over in this bed, I finally planted my cool weather stuff. We got some more lettuces. There's my snap peas and snow peas, and I finally set up the trellis with some baling twine that those peas can climb up. Some tatsoi, Asian greens, kales, spinach, and a couple broccoli. Broccoli and cabbage. Um, and these seedlings, I feel like they should be way bigger for when I planted them. But they did get hit with aphids. They've been outside hardening off for a week or two on and off during the day and then the past couple nights they were out all night. And the aphid problem seems to be somewhat better. I've still noticed a couple, but the kales have rebounded really nicely. That's Ragged Jack Kale. When I pulled them out of their two inch cell containers, there was like, of roots hanging out the bottom and we made this chicken wire fencing last year that I threw up their panels it's a little janky I didn't put it in correctly but um, hopefully that will keep a resident rabbit from eating my brassicas this year I'm still not so sure that brassicas are gonna happen for me I don't have very good luck growing them It'll probably get super hot and then they won't do well. But 
maybe we should have a positive attitude and hope that this year will be the year that I grow brassicas. And we have the greenhouse. Here are the annuals I bought at the store. This is my combo that I've been using for my hanging baskets in the front the past couple of years. And it works, so I'm going with it again. I don't really know annuals that well, so I kind of just go with the same thing over and over for the hanging baskets. So the kind of top fluffy part is this diamond frost. And then I have Silver Falls Dichondri, Dichondra that spills over the edge of the hanging planters. And then mixed in are these somewhat trailing. I usually try to buy more of a red color, but this is kind of a hot orange, that's okay. And then I might put something else in there too, but that's the general idea for my hanging baskets in the front. Here's all my flower seedlings. I don't know, things with C's tend to tend to be doing really well. Cerinthi and those ones back in the middle there are calendulas. Celosia is doing well. Everything's growing reasonably well, except for Bells of Ireland, which you can see I have two. I planted them a couple more times. I don't know, they don't, I, I did plant them separately because they don't seem to be liking these conditions that the other things are liking. Got marigolds back there, um, straw flowers. Chamomile, way in the back. Scabiosa. Got all my tomatoes. Wow, oh, these eggplants are growing. Traviata eggplant, that's kind of like your standard big purple eggplant. And then we come to the ridiculous situation that are my dahlias. Anything that's in a circular or square pot over here is a dahlia tuber that's been potted up, awaiting their time to go in the ground and hopefully give me a pretty good head start on the season. And I keep getting more dahlia orders in the mail, and I keep putting them in pots. And you can see. Many of them have growth. And then I've got my trays of zinnias and cosmos. Another thing I purchased when I went shopping, another scented geranium, which are really nice in floral arrangements. And this is probably one of everybody's favorite, the chocolate mint scented geranium. Look at those leaves, they're so pretty. And they smell good too. Still got some lettuces growing in the Planters along the wall here. Got my basils. I bought some, finally bought some comfrey. You can use comfrey to make a home grow in a fertilizer. It's really good for your vegetables. More flowers. Parsley, more flowers. 
more parsley. And I got dahlias that I'm growing from seed up there as well. Oh, and here is the David Austin rose that I just got in the mail. I'll show you what it looks like. This one actually has a lot more growth on it than the last one I purchased. Um, so this is a David Austin Desdemona. It's not a climbing rose, it's a shrub rose and it's really, really beautiful white rose with a great scent. And the beautiful, like very frilly blooms that are characteristic of a David Austin rose. So that's got to go in. As you can see, it's basically just a rootstock with some growth on the top. Um, you soak it in water so that the roots get nice and hydrated. And then you plant it in the ground. And it's a little bit cheaper to do that than to buy a potted rose. Probably like half the price. Obviously the potted roses are slightly further ahead. That's what you can buy if you go to the nurseries right now. There's a nursery in a cushnet mass called Rosalind that has tons of David Austin potted roses. Oh, they also had some at the Rose Shack. So if you're interested in a David Austin rose, check out. Check out those places. Well, that's our tour for today. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And hopefully, if I'm still on top of my game, you'll see me next week. Take care.